Happy Wednesday, third day of the week. It is another day for today's Talk with Marty T. And I am Marty T. And this is today's Talk, the Un podcast for family, friends, and business. I've got another friend with me today. This is Kara. Hi, Kara. How are you today? Hi, Marty. I am fantastic today. I love being called a friend. That makes me happy. Yes, friend, colleague, um, um, uh, mentor, inspiration, muse, um, uh, gosh, uh, there's so many things I could call you, but what are you really officially? You are like, oh. like you're like the CEO. You're like really important people. Tell us about who I'm, you are and where you're from. I wish I were. I wish. That's a very kind thing to say. So I'm the, the COO. So I'm the chief operating officer. I tell people that I am really good at bringing your vision to life. Um, and I do that at the Technology Association of Oregon based in Portland. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and I am really excited to be here because you're one of our awesome members and you do really cool work in the neurodiversity and just general accessibility state, which I appreciate as somebody who's working to build an inclusive innovation economy. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate you actually even having a platform to be able to do it. I mean, I've, I've watched TAO since I've been in the area that's come online. And- you're a great addition to the organization as well, coming all the way from the right coast to the left coast. Actually, you left the left coast and came to the right coast. Yeah. I came to the best coast, yeah. <laughs> best coast. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about TAO. What is Tech Association of Oregon for those people that are, I mean, is it all techie? I mean, how confusing is it for people to understand what you do? What does I, TAO do? I think it's really confusing. So I, I always tell people, um, So TAO or TAO or the Tech Association of Oregon, we go by all of them, is a 501c6, which basically makes us a nonprofit member association that can advocate and lobby on behalf of our members. And while we technically are in the space of the tech industry, I can speak from experience that that has really changed a lot over the last 10 years because so much tech is involved in so much industry. And then in the last 18 months in this COVID chapter that inspired these talks, it's really accelerated us. Everyone has gone through their digital transformation. So what we say is that we are the organization that is helping um, to drive the inclusive innovation economy through tech. And we do that in Oregon and Southwest Washington. And so when we rephrase that, instead of being driven by tech, we're doing this through tech, that really sort of opened up the conversations into different industries. So manufacturing and ag and education and everybody that's had to approach business differently in the last 15 months um, has really used us as a resource. And so to kind of build on that in terms of what we do, so we do advocate for tech policy and that's everything from uh, policing practices so that employees feel safe to talking around the digital divide and how to ensure um, equitable access to the internet to talking about business taxes and entrepreneurship and how we can support that. And then beyond that advocacy work, we really are in the business of connecting people. Um, So that's networking, providing professional development opportunities, and just being a voice for the industry um, across recruitment of companies, of talent, retention of companies, retention um, of talent, and how we can make sure we have an innovative, um, economy essentially throughout the state. So okay. it's not just tech anymore, but it used to be. It's it just, it's be. just changed. And see, you're mentioning a lot of things that I think the, the tides turned a little bit because you may be able to echo this for me, but I don't want to say COVID brought out some good things, <laughs> but I think COVID kind of helped tech a little bit. Would you agree? Because people uh, kind of avoided yeah. the whole tech whole thing for a long time and they kind of got pushed into it. COVID kind of helped you a little bit, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think last year was really scary for everybody. And then what we saw was so many companies needed some sort of tech solution. And so one of like the things that we were able to do in that first COVID quarter was pull together resources 
for companies that may not have been tech centric. And our tech resource list actually wound up on the governor's resource COVID list for tech solutions. And this was everything from um, how do you automate your timesheet check in at a restaurant or a grocery store so it's you know much more touch less and paperless to um, how can you access you know a Comcast or um, a Direct TV's uh, lower priced option for schooling? So like there, all of those things have changed, and we've just seen um, the exacerbation of the industry as more companies need these solutions, and so it's like this like cyclical effect of tech continuing to do well. So how long have you been doing tech? How long have you been in this whole industry? Too long, too long to admit in public. Um, I started in tech when I was 23 at a okay. software engineering firm. So, so years come, ago. yeah, like like seven years ago. Okay. Uh, so come 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 September, it'll be 20 years that I have wow. been in a okay. tech, a tech, a tech adjacent or a tech enabled role. Wow, far out. So tell me about your, what you've seen change in the short time you've been here. Tell me a little bit more about. Tech Association of Oregon, how it can help some of the community here. I love that. So one thing I've seen is we've also gone through our own digital transformation. I think we were probably really well known for doing events and that looks different. So actually I looked at some metrics yesterday with one of my amazing coworkers, Justin Martinez, and our highest event attendance of the last five years was in April, May, and June of 2020 because we pivoted quickly to move online and we brought elected officials who were talking about things that were very relevant that a lot of our community doesn't have access to. I mean, I don't know how often you hang out with the Secretary of State for the state of oh, Oregon, but, yeah, not you know, <laughs> but we, were, we were able <laughs> to bring her, week. it's just, you know, like I, we were on a walk yesterday in Forest Park, but like we were able to bring um, the Secretary of State to our, our community and not just to CEOs, but to everyone. And so we really quickly did online wine tastings and all the things that are super traditional now. But we also realized that we had an opportunity to make the, the customer effort score with our members better. So we redid our website, which was always part of the 2020 plan. And we made it more accessible for members to upload their own events, upload their own blog content, upload their own business resources. We created an online platform for folks to connect with each other. We brought our smaller communities back. And the one thing that we did that I'm really proud of is we went past the executives that were our sponsors and down into communities of mid-level managers and lower level software developers and folks in marketing that hadn't really been a part of our community before by bringing some, some special subject areas um, to market. And so I think that we've made it easier to engage with us. And I think that folks have recognized that while we continue to stay relevant um, and pivot more to what our members need. I like the fact that you mentioned communities. I think that's something that's really important, especially as we, we I, I make the joke, last year my life mattered. And, and now it's, we're bringing in more words like inclusion and diversity and all these other different things. But it it's, seems to be even more uh, illustrative for me when I actually see organizations actually doing something. Versus just, you know, using the buzzwords and, you know, making it sound great. It's just from my experience with, with just what I've seen a TAO do, actually taking advantage of some of these things and actually putting some things together. Like I, I'm, I'm looking here at the past event I just uh, attended was the uh, Oregon uh, Black and Latinx uh, community uh, meetup that you guys did. And you, you're putting these communities together with people in tech to kind of help with this mindset. You'll start, start these conversations. That's yeah. not revolutionary. I, I've never seen that happen so fast. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I think it's hard to talk about the work we do without seeming performative, but like it's really important to me as a woman in tech, which is again, only 24% of yeah. the industry. And it has been for the entire 20 years I have been in it. It has not changed a say, single- has it, has, it, has it changed at all? <laughs> the percentage point of women in the industry has not changed in 20 years. And so, you know, I can take that, that lived experience and you know think about what it would be like for somebody that identifies as black or latinx or indigenous Absolutely. and you know know that those very talented folks exist in this industry 
but like, what are we doing to change the narrative, ask our companies to think differently? You know, I was looking at a really large company the other day and it just kind of like floored me that I'm not going to say its name, but um, I was looking at leadership across the, the globe and I, there's probably 50 leadership positions and there was not a single person. And again, this was an eye test, but there was not a single person that I, that I could assume was a black or African or African-American individual. Yeah. Um, not that there weren't folks of color. And I was like, wow, how in 2021 is that the reality of our industry? And so that I find um, disconcerting. And so all the small things that I think we can do as a business association that I do think can change the discussion are really critically important. And thank you for participating because without hearing your voice and your story, um, and, and how we can make that change for the next generation, like it's just not gonna happen. What do you find are some of the uh, things people say when they first get involved with TAO? Do they find any, any uh, roadblocks or do they find it something they enjoy? So we've, again, like really slimmed down like how you start. We used to onboard people with a 27 um, slide PowerPoint deck. And now we use a single sheet of paper with hyperlinks to take them directly to what they can access. Yes. And like, <laughs> that doesn't seem like a big change, but if you know anything about membership organizations, like the first 90 days to capture somebody's engagement is really critical. Yeah, so rather yeah. than being like, hey, you're a member, here's your slide deck, thanks so much, it's like, hey, Here's the sheet. And if you go to the very last bullet and click like get our newsletter, you will start getting information immediately. If you click our online community, you can apply and you'll be in that within 24 hours. And so like we, we just made the barrier to our benefits a lot lower um, by de redefining what our digital strategy looked like. That's and awesome. then I think most people say like they learn something, they meet someone, um, and they do think we have a lot of fun and they're ready for us to have fun in person again. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, I can't wait. I mean, literally, I don't, I tell people it's like when we first started going online, it, it was interesting when everybody was at home. Uh, one of the first questions people asked me, well, Marty, how are you dealing with the whole work at home and staying inside thing? I was like, Tuesday? I and mean, I've, I've been doing it pretty much most of my life. I've been working from home. So I'm actually kind of jonesing to actually get in person. I literally, most of you guys watching this don't know that I've never actually seen Kara face to face. <laughs> we've met online. <laughs> Only with a <the> screen. <laughs> yes, we've had a great online friendship and love affair. So we're going to be great friends when we see each other. I'm like, hey, nice to see you finally. But anyway, um, let me ask you this. When it comes to, um, I guess, goals and plans for TAO for the year, I'm, oh, coming year. What, what, what kind of big projects or plans do you guys have for the year? So we actually have a huge data project going on right now. So when we um, ask people to register, they can create their profile so we can collect demographic information. So then we can understand like what our community actually looks like. And I mean that from all aspects, like what part of the state, what type of industry, um, age demographic, um, what kind of programming you'd like to see. So we're doing that. And then we're actually like, using all of the tools that we have at our disposal to understand like what time of day works better. And so none of these things will be anecdotal. So I think you'll see an evolution of our program, our programming and our communications that is much more driven by data. So that's a really, really, really big initiative. And I mean, honestly, I hate to say it because it sounds so cliche, but getting people back in person safely, but doing that in a way that allows us to continue to support a statewide presence and not just Portland Metro is right. a huge challenge and goal of ours as we head out of 2021 and into 2022. Right well, I will tell you, I mean, literally from the first time we met, because I, I actually met you, I was referred to you, and you actually mm -hmm. had mentioned something about the potential of having some sort of group at some point in time that was going to bring together some people that actually turned into this Black Latinx I am looking forward to see what comes because literally I, I see uh, TAO as being a, a great force coming in the future. And I, I'm glad it's under your leadership and some of the folks you guys work with. So it's fantastic. So literally if people want to get some more information on how to actually get involved or get a hold of you for a question, what's the best way to reach out? Okay, so the easiest way is membership at techorgan.org. Um, that is hands down. You can go to our website, techorgan.org. There's an option to join us. I think 
a tool on our website where someone can chat with you and answer your questions. We added that. I forgot. That was pretty cool in 2020. So that's definitely the best way. Um, and then following us on LinkedIn or just following me on LinkedIn because I share a lot about what we do. So you heard it here. You can stalk her on LinkedIn. She's giving you plenty of permission to do that. Yeah. I think they call it following. I mean, it's really nice how they put that. It's, it's, it's a supportive here. business community. <laughs> okay, great. So now we're going to do something brand new. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. Brand new segment, folks. Brand new segment on the show. I'm calling it Let's Get Real. So let's get real. I'm going to ask you three questions that you don't know anything about. And I got it from this great book of three oh. questions. I love this. This is exciting. I just, these, I just picked these at random before I even got on a call with you. So, okay, good. Number one, which historical figure do you most identify with? <laughs> Uh, which historical figure do I most identify with? Um, I'm going to go with Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. I like that. Strong woman in a male-dominated world. Very yes. So. Mark Antony was like at her feet. Yes. Right. I like that. Okay. Okay. Question number two. Okay. What's the best costume you've ever worn? Oh, hands down easy. Uh, I dressed as a bumblebee and I dressed my little tiny dog as a bumblebee for Halloween. And we were the boo bees. The boo bees. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. That is great. All right. Hands Hands down, the best costume ever because it's hilarious for an adult to be in a bee costume. And then I just carried a sign that said boo. And people were like, what? I was like, booby. <laughs> Love it. Oh, that is amazing. Okay. And here we go. Question number three. Yes. Name your secret obsession. Butter. <laughs> I'm a, I love butter. Like, but are it you is. Italian? Yeah. There you go. And I'm from and I'm from the south and like <laughs> like other people put out cheese and crackers and I'm like, "Well, where's our stick of butter for the crackers?" And like I mean, there's probably a pound of butter eaten like every two days here. Oh yeah, easily. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's my favorite. It's my I'm a, I have a I have a butter Christmas tree ornament. But uh -huh. this year I'm going to get enough to put on one Christmas tree and my theme tree is going to just be butter. Butter. Now, now I understand why you work out so much. It, it's the butter. Yeah, but I, you thought I was going to say running. I have to run because of the butter. Because of the butter. And that, now it totally makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for making my new segment the best. So anything you want to share with us, you want anything you want to share with us before we go? Yeah, I, I think we live in a great state and I think that our community proves out that you can meet amazing people without ever meeting them in person yet, because that's how you and I got connected. And I think that if you're looking to build your network and you're looking to do it in a different way, like you have to put a little work in, but we're a great platform to do that. And you will meet some people that will become your lifelong co-conspirators and friends. Fabulous, fabulous. Thank you so much for being on with me, Kara. If you guys want to get a hold of Kara, I'll have the information in the chat. Thanks again for on the chat. I always say chat in the comments. That's where the information will be. If you would like to be on the show, I'll also have that information in the comments as well. Kara, thanks. This wasn't too painful, was it? It was the best, but just it's like you. Oh, no, you're the best. <laughs> Love you, Tons. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Say bye. Okay, bye. Two degrees, I left that jacket in my car. I'm in the mood for a switcher. I hit the function, hit the road right till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picks a perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker. Bill, I'm in the mood for a changer. I leave the city and return with my changer. They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us. They wanna knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Hey, look, came in with the what's that? 
Left out with the who she Laying game like 2D. I've been kicking like Bruce Lee. Okay. Margarita to the brim tip. Black denim need a